Alright there everyone, time for booze and talk, it's a bit late again this week, uh, don't know why, just playing a lot of Dwarf Fortress and getting distracted over night time and not making a video, so um, it's about 3am, probably way past 3am actually, and I thought shit, I better do a video, I haven't done one yet, and better get on with it. Um, this is This was sent by the Drunk Cooks. So thank you very much, and um, I was just looking at the can before I started the video, and um, it's weird, like uh, it's like something that's been made in Britain, exported to America, and then in, and then brought back here. I don't know. I don't understand. First off, it's got um, imported around the sat top there. So I was like, what the hell, this is, I'm sure this is made in the UK, why would it say imported? It says, produced and bottled at Halewood International, Wilson Road, Hoyton, United Kingdom. Imported by St. Killian Importing, Co Everett, I don't know what that, count, is that County Everett, Massachusetts? I guess, in that, I don't know, is that America? Yeah, I think so, MA, is that Massachusetts? But then why has it all been brought back to the UK and then had this 330ml sticker put on it? Which is something they put on to... I've seen this like on American sweets, when they import American sweets to the UK, they put like a, a paper sticker like that onto things. It's because the weights and measurements are different, so that's an odd, an odd thing just to begin with. Um, and it's got like fluid ounces on, which you wouldn't get. 11.2 fluid ounces, malt beverage with natural flavours and car caramel colour added. I don't think it would be called a malt beverage on the UK cans and it definitely wouldn't have fluid ounces as a measurement. It says best served chilled over ice with a slice of lemon or lime. I'm not going to do any of that, I'm just going to drink it out of the can. Um, I'm sure it'd be good enough anyway. It's um, I don't think it's something that benefits from sitting or, you know, being in a certain glass. I think you can just pound out of the can. Um, anyway, let's have a look. What does that say? For more than 200 years, Krabby's has shipped its ginger from the Far East, following in the pioneer, pioneering, pioneering footsteps of the first Scots merchant adventurers, hence our distinctive elephant trademark. And then um, it says here, following a secret recipe, the steeped ginger is combined with quality ingredients and matured for six months to release a deliciously distinctive flavour. Now, I do love ginger. Anything with ginger in, love it. I always get ginger sweets if I see them. Anything, pretty much. When I was a kid, ginger nut biscuits were like my favourite thing ever. Um... There's this tea that you can get in Chinatown, and it's it's like milk tea. It's like, you know, sachets you get a hot chocolate, but it's like a ginger milk tea. Ah, oh, I love it. So um, I, I know I've had Krabby's in the past, but um, I haven't had it in a long time, so I can't remember whether it was good or not. Let's have a go. It smells good. It smells like ginger beer or something, but I don't know. I know you can get different flavours of Krabby's as well. Yeah, it's nice. I, oh, it's got quite a kick to it. I was going to say, with, with ginger things, I always kind of want them to be like really strong ginger. I've had some sweets that are like this. You chew on them and it's like they're burning your mouth. They're so gingery. I always want something like that from a drink. I think I said that about the um, the Witchwood ginger beard, which was kind of disappointing. That I thought if it was a Witchwood one, it should be like absolutely crazily strong, gingery tasting, but it wasn't. But actually, this is nice, nicely balanced. Not. Not as gingery as I'd like it, but still pretty good. Still got a little kick to it, it's so quite nice. Ah, <sighs> oh, fucking hell. 
So it's like, I don't know what day it is. I don't know what the date is. I think it's like 16th or something. Maybe 17th. Uh, I'm completely skint and uh, I've got, I'm going to try and send a parcel back to the drum cooks and I've got a, another thing to send the uh, to Phil Dead Canary Channel um, it's just whether I've got enough money because um, Christmas always makes me completely skinned we get paid a bit early this month for my job so I get paid at like a few days before I normally would but um, I think by then it'd be too late for mail so Hopefully I'll get a parcel back to you before Christmas. Ah, and it's only small things because um, it's not like a big parcel of booze like you sent me because I, I couldn't, I can't afford to buy a lot of booze and stuff at the moment. Which is good, good job that I've got a random load of stuff sent to me from people. So uh, yeah, pretty good. Still got to get the wife's present really. I've got a couple off Amazon ordered, well, it's sent to me, but um, I don't know. Every year I just have a real trouble getting people presents. I, I just, I'm really bad at buying presents. I never know what to get, and yeah, I don't know. Even when I live with someone, even when I'm married to them, I still don't know what to buy people. So, uh, I don't know, I'm going to have to wait until the fucking 21st. Every year I do the same thing. I hate Christmas shopping. I always leave it until that last minute to go and it's always, the shop's always crowded as fuck. Oh, God. Oh. And then every year after that I was thinking, right, what I'm going to do is buy, buy presents through the year so that I have them ready. I never do. I never do when it comes around. So there you go. Another reason why I haven't got any money is because next year I've got two stag dues. I mean, I've had to pay for them because the people, like the people who were going, like basically booked it, and I was like, "Oh, I'll send you the money." And uh, one of them, one of them's in Amsterdam, and that's going to be actually on the date of that. It's going to be on my birthday as well, so it's going to be a crazy celebration. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that, and then another one, a few month, uh, like a few weeks later, I think, in uh, Budapest, and these are all like four day weekends, crazy. So uh, I've paid for those, and um, yeah, that's it. I'm just completely skint now. I'm saving up, like trying to keep some like spending money for those as well. It's gonna be difficult, but uh, yeah, next. Next year, I'm looking forward to it. Two stag do's abroad. Yeah. The um, Amsterdam one, especially. I've always wanted to go to Amsterdam. Just, I just really want to go, and I uh, never have. And um, yeah, I'm excited for it. And I, I just watched. Um, any Trailer Park Boys fans there if, who, I don't know whether you've watched, oh, I can't remember what it's called, it's the one, it's, there's a Trailer Park Boys, there's like a new series on Netflix and it's like they send them to Europe and they've got, they go around different countries in Europe, <coughs> doing various tasks and um, I don't know, I found it kind of disappointing really, uh, it seemed a bit it's kind of what I kind of liked the idea of it. It's kind of like taking the characters and putting them into a kind of situation where they're in the public. So it's kind of almost like oh, I don't know, like Face Jacker or something like that. If you've seen Face Jacker or I don't know, some of the Dom Jolly stuff. It's like you know, like like characters but in among real public people, um, and they have to do various tasks in different cities around Europe sounds good but I found it a bit sort of lacklustre I guess uh, I, 
for some reason it felt like watching people doing impressions of the characters rather than the actual actors doing the characters. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's like it, it felt strange. Like they were out of character, but they were the characters. You know, what I mean, it was the actual actors who play. Um, Ricky Julian and Bubbles, but it was like watching someone doing an impression of them characters, if that makes any sense. And um, I don't want to give give away too many spoilers, but the way it was set up, it was kind of like set up for them to sort of have a bad time, which it kind of gives a lot of opportunity for comedy, but at the same time, it kind of like meant they didn't get to do a lot of the things that you'd want to see the trailer park boys doing in say imagine Ricky in Amsterdam what he'd get up to there there wasn't enough of what you'd expect or what you'd want to see in my opinion so uh, I don't know I found it a bit disappointing it was okay I watched it all and I laughed at it a few points but I don't know I, I, they should do another, just do a series of Trailer Park Boys and have them go to Amsterdam and it be as good as you'd imagine the Trailer Park Boys being in Amsterdam what should be, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. Let's just say it didn't seem like they enjoyed it to the fullest. Yeah. So, sorry if you don't watch Trade About Boys, because this video has just been mostly me talking about that show. But then, I don't know, what else do I do in my life but sit around and watch TV and play computer games, play Dwarf Fortress. I'll tell you about my latest thought in Dwarf Fortress. I decided to embark on a on a, um, glacier in the wilderness, and... Um, there's yetis everywhere, just coming running around, taking over. I built this trade depot, and then this weird chameleon came and destroyed it, and uh, we managed to chase him away. But then, because he destroyed the de the trade depot, all the beer, all the booze that I traded for in its barrels was just like scattered all over this glacier, like all over the floor. And then all these polar bear men, like half polar bear, half men, came down, just started drinking all the booze. I sent my military over to them and they were just kind of stood around, they weren't like fighting them because they weren't like aggressive, they were just having a good time drinking the booze. So what I did was told my dwarfs to drag all the booze inside into this sort of um, cavern that I was digging in, into the glacier. And um, they dragged it all down there. The polar bear men and the polar bear woman who was with them just followed, just came down in right into the fortress with them, started drinking the booze again. So um, I just basically slaughtered them with my military. Just said, right, kill them. So uh, there was quite a... If you imagine what a polar bear man or woman having a nice drunken time looks like getting slaughtered by a load of dwarves, then uh, that's kind of what happened. Exciting times. I should have made videos about it, but I don't know. Recording Dwarf Fortress footage is such a pain in the ass that I don't bother most of the time. But um, yeah, that's it. So uh, right, I'll end the video here. Nice drink. I enjoyed that. Um, I would like to see a really strong alcoholic ginger beer. Like strong as in, maybe in strength as well. This is 4.8% which is quite good. But like strong, but also fiery burning your mouth, fiery tasting. I would enjoy that. <coughs> okay, thanks for watching and see you later.